because we are and live. here we go because we are live broadcasting we... live on all streams your sirshipness hello flash and hello grammy hi vanny i'm still eating <laughs> okay i need a i need a superhero name for today what shall it be food help, man help me think of it food man no we captain got obvious no, I'm Capitani Zani, okay? Well, First that's the same old hello thing. To all that's the bots and man. the bodies in the chat room today. Yeah. They're on the North Wait a minute. Ah. RLM Radio. Thank you for coming along and listening. Uh, <laughs> speak Hello Dark. Love. With Flash and Grammy. You want to say hi to the bots and bodies? I think I'll do that. And tonight for your writing perusal we have in the lineup the barman beetle grimnir moose girl brackets dc anti asmo chalcedony gramsy ib don c j abba dr two meister brow brew miss kate rob works romes van white vin e weather dork phantom circle hello honey cyborg noodle duh and Siv, me, Frumpy, Frumpy3, Gooberzilla, Gromit, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss, Mr. Snick, Pondergander, Prince, Ponsas, and Smart Hands. And you know who we're missing. No, we're not missing anything. What? Your friend and mine. That's right. No, oh, I don't miss him. Are you insane? Captain Peacock. That's like of athlete missing a really good case of jock hitch. Are you insane, sir? Have you been to the doctor? Mm. No, not since 20 and 11. Thank you very much for bringing that up. I'm so proud of my not seeing a doctor record. You know, and people are all going to go, oh, yeah, but when you get slammed, boy, you're going to get slammed really good. And to them, I say, yeah, who gives a fuck? What do you think of that, Vinny? Huh? 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 Hey, cough button. Mute that fucking mic. I've learned yeah. to do it. No, don't mute. Cough in unison. We should all cough together. The Ready? collective dork. No, I'm just joking. The collective dork cough for your listening pleasure on the RealLibertyMedia.com. Live today on the dork table, we have. Hostage number one, Vin E. Say hi, Vinny. Cough, cough, hi. And we have hostage number two. Say hi, Miss Mary. You're still eating. There you go. <laughs> See, herding cats and herding dorks is very similar. After all, hi. <laughs> who knew okay, she I, was telling the truth? Hey, I've got it. Are you ready? No, nah, did you hear Mary's show last night, Vince? I did. did. Did you? What did you think? I thought, as always, that I'm going to miss Mary. Uh, uh-oh. Why? She's so funny, and she makes you into a laughable person. Oh, that. Mm. So you're not going to be serious. You're going to be yeah, comical. Wait. Matter of fact, I am so serious. I'm going all uh, super what do you, what we call ourselves? Okay, can you hear me better? <laughs> she put on her headphones because she's finished yeah, having did. lunch. Very good, Miss Mary. We're very proud of you. No, so we you were can just hear me better yeah, now. Yeah, we were bragging about your show last night. You want to say anything? Oh. oh, I was just, I was just in the mood to just damn it all, be silly. And you did a great fucking job of that. Carried over into today. Good. Me and Vinny are going to build a statue of you at UCY. <laughs> oh, how cool. Is it going to be one that has a sign around its neck that says pigeons poo here? No, because it's going to be topless. So the sign will be around your waist. Oh. <laughs> so you're giving the pigeons a, a perch. Okay. No, we're going to hope they aim for your butt. <laughs> ah. Well, splatter never paint mind. on the butt. <laughs> Yeehaw! Hey, yeah. that's something I never thought right. about but, doing. So you were well, you were giggly and motivated to be silly? Because <laughs> it was a very serious, even though I was laughing funny, you know, it was a very serious thing that you did there with your list. 
I was impressed. Because it's hard to be funny on purpose. You just do it when it happens. It's, it's not nothing you can plan. Uh, I didn't. Re I was just having fun. I don't. To me, it's like, ah, if you guys laugh, great, but I'm having a good time. Well, me and Vinny <laughs> decided we're going to miss you not being on the radio. Well, improve your aim. Improve oh, my oh, aim. Oh, so I should, like, be a Trumpster now? We're, we're going to miss you. Improve your aim. Oh, okay. I'm not going to miss you. I'm, I'm still going to talk to you. I'll just call you on freaking wire. Dodge that oh, fucker. You. Go on, I dare you. Um, um, yeah, okay. So yeah. I went I went down to the bar today to have a couple of pre dork table, you know, drinks. Uh huh. And my birthday's coming up next month and Karsten's is that month too. And the two of them are gonna be uh, out of town until the eighteenth. So my birthday's after the eighteenth and uh we were talking about it tonight and I said Saturday would be a whole lot better to celebrate it than the actual day it's on she says oh well who are you gonna bring <laughs> so I said just me and circle come it, you know it's it's a big thing to me but I'm not about flamboyance and I'm just gonna do it with my wife and she says well what will she want to eat <laughs> and I, I well I don't know yet so well she's gonna call me and and tell me what's available and then I'll tell her what Sir wants out of what's you know what the choices are and when we go there i'm going to have a birthday celebration with my wife yay yeah but i'm not big on pub i despise man you guys you think i talk a lot of shit on the radio but it's real i do not get along you know in that society thing so much you know to be made a special deal of is really weird to me so going out on my birthday is something I've not done since I've been in Denmark and haven't made a big yeah. hoopla out of it yet. But 6 oh. hmm. Yeah, it's a big six with that magic zero behind it because that magic zero, depending on how many you put behind it, bada bing, bada boom, the number is massive and huge and, <laughs> and all of a sudden it's no longer real. Echo. As if it was real in the first place, but whatever. Well, I share your uh, uh, opinion of the illusion of time. <laughs> Let's say that out loud. Okay. Uh, what are we going to say? Well, we gonna... sit down, Vinny. Catch up. Out it. All right. Sad. Now, the, the grown ups <laughs> in the world have this obsession for the rest of us dumbasses being where they tell us to be at the time they tell us to be there. And they use the clock to make us do it. And it works. And I don't like it. I never have. But here we go. Now the clock's coming around and I can, you know, look at it with a smile. So I'm going to use it. <laughs> ah, there you go. I'm dirty like that. I play both sides of the game. Okay. See when well, it suits, yeah. When it suits me, I'll use the clock, and when it doesn't suit me, fuck the clock. I call it being alive. Other ah. people blame it on the country they're from. You ever blame that your bad side on America? <laughs> I guess you no. wouldn't have to be in America when you do your bad shit, but see, I've got I that luxury here. I can just go, hey, I'm American. Oh, see, and I just, yeah, so, what of it? I did that, yeah, now let's move along. Same thing, my different evil, version. My evil twin, you know, takes yeah. the flack for a lot of that stuff. And she sits back with the popcorn and the beer and says, yeah, bring it. <laughs> what are you going to do with all your extra time that you're going to have from not doing the radio? <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> well... You know, four hours, that's half a night's sleep. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, um, it's eight showers. Oh, oh, four hours. What can you do in four hours? You can have sex 60 times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there then there's always with a partner. 
Oh, hey. That yeah. cuts it down to 30. Yeah. A partner helps. A partner helps, yeah. That cuts it yeah. down into 30, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. You get less for well, your money. I am going to, I got to start working on Christmas presents for the grandbabies. What are so. you making them this time? I haven't really decided yet. Maybe that's, that's why knit them little Trump dolls to throw shit at. Yeah, when they're angry, no. you can teach them to kick the shit out of their Trump dolls. Yeah. <laughs> start yeah. start an American Revolution over there or something. No, I want an American Evolution. Get that R out of there. Yeah. Evolve, uh, people, evolve. Into what? What's wrong with them now that they need to evolve into something else? Come on. They need to evolve into being responsible for their own actions. What? Oh, hey. Vinny. I know. Vinny. I know. Vinny. She's, uh, hello? she's running amok on us already. We just started the show. I am. I am. 12 I'm, minutes in. I'm she's zoned out over here, Dave. Wow. Yeah, I got, like, super stoned. You, I you, you light you. one up. Man. I did. It's the best way to do it. And people go, well, you waste your life away smoking all those drugs. And I say, yeah, but you know what? I never voted. I never supported anybody that was popular, except for maybe, I don't know, Keith, maybe Eric Clapton. But (laughs) they never held a public office, so they're not really important in the overall scheme of things any fucking way. But Well, you like the Beatles, didn't you? you? Of course. But we have to consider what kind of world we're going to leave, Keith. These things are important to mankind, and mankind looks the other way. And uh, something well, yeah. something came up on the, uh, I think it was Mines earlier, maybe it was RLM. Keith was getting, there was rumors in the 70s about Keith was flying to somewhere in Switzerland or some damn place and getting his blood changed out so that he could continue to enjoy his heroin addiction. Of course, you know, back in the 70s, we were still going to the moon and shit. We didn't know much back then. And uh, But here we are today, and you go, wow, maybe he was uh, eating those baby things, you know, drinking the baby juice, blood stuff, to stay young. And it may not have helped him on the outside, but the fucker can still play guitar, and his wife's like 20 years younger than him. So if I want to be anybody, it's not Trump, it's Keith. Ah, well, you do realize if there is a nuclear holocaust, the only things remain remaining alive will be cockroaches and Keith Richards as their ruler. Well, there's a, there's going to be a human mortality rate, period. You know that, right? There always is. Yes. Part OK, well, that's even. the part of life. You know, all this threat of the you know annihilation all the time. People always overlook that part of the dialogue and they never say, well, there's going to be a a certain amount of people that do physically survive it. Maybe not mentally. They might think they're dogs or cats or whatever, but, you know, run around on their hands and feet. But they're going to they're going to survive physically this crap that they're doing to us. So maybe that's what the GMOs are for, to evolve you into the next level of humanity so you can tolerate the poisons they're giving you. Hmm. Have you ever seen that link of cleaning Coca-Cola, using (coughs) Coca-Cola to clean the rust off a bumper? Yeah, actually way, 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 way back in the day. We took Coca-Cola and and poured it into a cup and then dropped a chunk of steak in there. Yeah, it's kind of scary what it'll do. Uh, Yeah, exactly. All right, but human beings, we're designed way better than we're told. You know, medicine harps on how fragile we are. Oh, but you're so fragile. Oh, you only use 10% of your brain. Oh, you need government to wipe your ass. See, they do all these these, uh, weakling games on us in society so that we'll bow to their shit and think that we're fucking weak without them like you went through with those uh what what medicines were those that you were pissing and moaning about uh they were giving them to your mom oh the high blood pressure man no no the other one diuretics 
something I forget the name of it now all of a sudden I just had a blank come to me but it's society works on working on our collective uh, like what we're addicted to bone yeah. we're no we're mentally addicted to society all of us in some way or another my weakness seems to be the bars ah well, as antisocial as I feel I truly am, I still got this thing about stopping down at the bar and having a beer, yakking with a bartender. It's something I've always done everywhere I've ever been. It's just a normal thing for me to do. And barriers like language don't don't interfere with that. No, and you know it is kind of fun, but it's all it can also be a little bit on the pricey side and yeah, so I just go out in my yard, and my my thing is, um, I squirrel. <laughs> well, I was at the bar in 15, 15 years. Well, maybe. okay, but Vinny, that, that's your, see, that's what I mean. We all got our inside. So there's two people we live in. There's the one we think we are, and then there's the person we truly are. Yeah. Ah. And well, other people have you know make the, make these claims like they know you because they saw you do this or that or the other. But how well do these people who judge you know you? Hmm? 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 Uh, not very well because ba they're basing their judgment on one moment in time. Yeah, well, the thing that I have come to terms with it's hard to discuss with other folk and believe at the t time shit's happening. But whatever I see in everybody else is just me acting out. And it makes a lot of sense when I'm isolated and I can think it through and see my part in this and my part in that. But when things are happening, they look very different than what they truly are at the moment. Well, that's like, that's like everything. I well, think. like what? What came to mind when I brought that up to you? Well, when things are... Okay, like uh, what's been in the news all freaking week with Jeffrey Epstein? <laughs> I haven't seen much of that. Just on the internet, okay. Well, yeah, it's been on. I don't have any other news other than the internet. But you you see people going on and on and on and on. And I I did for a while, but then it's like okay, okay, the horse is dead. Mm -hmm. And even if it's not dead, what are we gonna do about it? Why am I wasting all of my time on this? Well, so you'll avoid. You know, the, so so, so what is happening? What? There's there's like multiple levels going on besides what you see is happening. But unless, you know, unless you've got friends in the know or you're there, you're not going to know what all's going on. So you only get to see the the up front. You don't get to see all the peripheral shit. I like to tell that a little differently by watching what people are saying. It's not uh, it, you're seeing what they're saying why they're saying it and uh, the setup especially when you go to look at these people that the uh, professional spokespersons for the uh, and proponents of mainstream media uh, they're setting up the narrative so you know what uh, what can be expected by what they're saying hmm. uh, oh yeah that's what i like to see what they're saying you know it's just gobbledygook. Well, the big thing today for me here in Denmark wasn't the Epstein thing it was the did you hear what your stupid president said about Greenland? <laughs> no, I kept seeing shit about how they were going to buy Greenland, and it's like, what the? From who? Who are they going to? But well, I'm surprised he didn't say that he was going to buy Iceland so that they could uh, harvest ice to oh, sell. That's funny because while while they were posting all that stuff about Greenland, Hans was posting about Iceland. <laughs> he didn't know he was posting the wrong country. It was fun. <laughs> But but see here in Denmark is instead of the violence and the, it was the your president said this crap about Greenland and that made us laugh. Well, instead of the talking about last night and I had <laughs> asked, uh, you know, who do you pay? And he says Denmark owns Greenland. So, uh, well, hey, no, is listen, Green listen I need, I, I'm trying to help you here. OK, listen to me. Let's get go. Let's get on board with this idea. OK, me and you and we're going to make money for you. In circle, and I want to kick back. <laughs> yeah, look, it's a great idea. It's very good. Great, great. 
Very nice. It's huge. It's huge. Yes, thank you, Gandhi. Well, Sark says that Greenland is technically called a Danish colony because it doesn't necessarily belong to the kingdom, blah, 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 but they, they claim some of they claim it in some legal way, but I, like I don't know it. how I don't know uh, how deep it goes. Yeah, all the way, man, on the top, running off the side. Wait a minute. What? what? Great. Very huge. Okay, Cirque defines it as an autonomous territory within the kingdom, but the Greenland people that I've met, they're they're nice people. I have yet to meet an angry Greenlander. But they so have a an autonomous they, colony, right? Autonomous, autonomous, right? Yeah, autonomous colony within the kingdom. Within the kingdom. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm going to listen to my Danish wife about her history way before I'm going to listen to the internet shit that I catch on the RLM or you guys here in America. That would be like Cirque defining, you know, uh, Kansas to Mary. It's not, that's backwards. You define your own place, not somebody else's. Yeah, it's like Circle calling me a Yankee. <laughs> well, you got to understand, there's so much more to that than, because uh, it's, laughing. yeah, it's funny, but there's so much more to that than you know. And being a Yankee in Europe is not, or the UK in in that case, isn't anything to be proud of. They're mocking us. They're making They're fun of us. Yeah, but all that was to make us look stupid. And they got what? What's his name? Uh, some guy, Mickey Rooney. No, forget his name. Anyway, they had some guy doing a song and singing and all that crap back in the 30s and the 40s. That's the Jews mocking us, man. What? How? Huh? Being a Yankee no. Doodle Dandy was an insult from the English to the Americans. And then yep. they get the Americans to parade around mocking themselves for the English. It's just political insanity to me. That's I, what I do with the Putin Patty. <laughs> yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah I know. Uh -huh. I know. So listen, I'm going to use that autonomous colony within the kingdom of the domesticated terrorist. Like it? The domesticated terrorist is a title I'm working on for my next broadcast. Okay. Right. So, hey, yeah, Vinny, I you like can that. say whatever you want. That's what freedom of speech means. Doesn't mean I have to like it or agree with it. Circle is is a great use to me. Urkel? What? No. Cir circle. circle. I called you Urkel right now. I didn't hear him say <laughs> circle. <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> yes, <he did. laughs> Did I do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you were saying how how uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy was supposed to be a slam. Yeah. There's, yeah. Throughout my life, I have been called all kind of things. Yeah. And yeah. told all kind of things. And for the hey, most Mark. part, I just look at them and go, okay, whatever. I'm going to have fun with that now. Well, it's, it's all that... It, you know, just because one person intends it as a slam doesn't necessarily mean that you have to take it as a slam and that you have to run with it as a slam. It's still all connected, all that idiotic country crap. Well, yeah, it is all idiotic country crap, but no. Nah. Well, let, let's be That's realistic. Talk, I say. Vinny, do you, do you ever consider where I live in your judgments of what I say? No. Or do you just judge the shit I say? Right. I don't. See, because when I, I talk to you and Vinny, I don't think of America. I think of you and Vinny. So, you know, putting all this country shit in front of people's names is it's man made. We're, we're taught to do it. It's not natural. It's not even probably right. We probably shouldn't. It's probably why they encourage us to do the divide and conquer. You, you know, well, where that. Yeah. Go ahead, Vinny. You know where I'm going to say you're wrong in that flash? You're free to say, disagree all you want. I don't care. You, I'm, I'm going to tell you, your opinion. Like, if you're looking at like this, that back in the day when it really meant when you said it, hmm. I'm American. Hmm. In the crowd. And how far back in the day are you going for it to have meant something? It still means something to me today. Why? Your well, government's value, a, it's a the fraud. Value, the value in exchange is not equal as it was in the past. Everything's getting eaten up, you know, and inflation and uh inflation and 
degradation. You know, we, we we used to really stand for something, and now it's becoming all too obvious that uh, there's other people at the helm. Uh, but there's people fighting to take that back, and you know, you're stumbling through the <clears throat> this uh, society that uh, we're all in, locked into in one sort of way or another. Do what you can. I Don't. Guess. Well, don't you think it's a choice that you make, or do you feel obligated to do shit? Uh, I feel it's a duty, an obligation. Okay, yeah. all right. Now, that's where me and you do not even, we're not even on the same planet with this one. I feel absolutely no obligation to anything I can't put my fucking hands on. If I can't touch it, it's not there. I live in a way different reality than you do, buddy. What if something touches you? You, you feel it that way. It affects you, right? You don't have to actually go out and grab a hold of something physical for it to have an effect and a feel upon you. Well, maybe you have to join that reality to some level and recognize it, or it does pass right by you. I think I ignore so much in life just by choice that... <laughs> I listened enough to get the answers. Like, I know about baking soda and turmeric, shit like that. Logical, uh, Mary stuff, her lotions and her, you know, the aromas. These little ideas would have gone right by me if I hadn't listened to people I would normally not pay attention to. Am I making any sense? Uh huh. Okay, because I listen to everybody talk, and then I decide in my own decision making process who to go with and who to avoid, or who to mock, or who to uh, argue with. Whatever the case is on my end, it's based on the information I got from the other side. So I give everybody equal opportunity to speak, to, to judge their shit, and go, I ain't fucking with that, or, oh, I'm behind it. Like, you, like you and your show last night. I heard that show. The first thing I wanted to do was let you know on the radio that you made me laugh, and I appreciate it. Yes. Well, good. Because this will carry on. Other people, you know, other people like your stuff. And some people don't. But you know what? The people that do are the ones that matter. Not the ones that don't. Well, yeah. Yeah. And we're all entitled to see this however we like. It's not about what you think so much as what you physically do is what I'm getting at. Yeah. Thinking stuff, that's up to you. You can believe anything you like. You can make your uh you can make a door your god. That's the god to the doorway of my you know, whatever you want. It's up to you. And what Well, you know, doorways do have the power to wipe my memory. (laughs) (laughs) Mike's saying Flash is ready to be a victim of robbery. I don't know what he means, but I felt like reading it. (laughs) Robbery of what? I what are you going to take from me? I, I've got uh, this and that here. Just uh, I'm going to copy this, this card. Yeah, uh, and thanks, Grimner, for making that um, tiny URL. This right here. What am I'm I gonna, missing? Whoops, crap. Hold on. Are you posting get... something? Yeah. Oh, I was teasing Mike because he was saying I was uh, ready to be a victim of robbery. And the only tangible thing there is in my life is my wife and the dog and the cat. And I don't really think f- the three of them are going to run off with anybody else and leave me too awful soon. So hmm. <clears throat> I'm not ready to be a victim of a robbery, but maybe you could explain that better because it didn't make sense. Or it's a joke and I'm too dumb to get it on the dork table with all this pot in my face. Because it's 420 somewhere. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, you're a little late. And you know what? Last night, all the all the laughing and stuff that I did on the radio, that was nothing compared to after I got off the radio and was scrolling through uh, my Facebook because I had a lot of notifications. And a daughter-in-law posted something. And I swear to God... I couldn't breathe part of the time. <laughs> yeah. Part. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You want me to read it to you? If, if you like. Kind of long. Yeah. Cirque, Cirque used to do that to me at bedtime a few few months back. Get me hey, laughing and my ribs hurt. <laughs> to tell her, yeah, stop, oh, you're I, killing me. <laughs> I have I had tears. <laughs> yes. My jaw hurt. Okay. And my belly hurt. I'll okay. be quiet. Called the retired husband. Okay. 
right. So after I retired, my wife insisted that I accompany her on her trips to Walmart. Unfortunately, like most men, I found shopping boring and preferred to get in and get out. Equally unfortunate, my wife is like most women. She loves to browse. Yesterday, my dear wife received the following letter from the local Walmart. Dear Mrs. Harris, over the past six months, your husband has caused quite a commotion in our store. We cannot tolerate this behavior and have been forced to ban both of you from the store. Our complaints against your husband, Mr. Harris, are listed below and are documented by video surveillance cameras. <laughs> are you ready for these? I've, I've heard done this before. Some of yeah. these. So, first one. He took 24 boxes of condoms and randomly put them in other people's carts when they weren't looking. <laughs> okay, that, that's rather tame. The next one was he set all the alarm clocks in housewares to go off at five-minute intervals. That's kind of cute. The next one, he made a trail of tomato juice on the floor leading to the women's restroom. Okay, gross, but funny. I feel bad for the person that had to clean it up. The next one, he walked up to an employee, told her in an official voice, Code 3 in housewares, get on it right away, which caused the employee to leave her assigned station and receive a reprimand from her supervisor that in turn resulted in a union grievance causing management to lose time and costing the company money. Cha-ching! By the way, we have no Code 3. Next one was went to the service desk and tried to put a bag of M&Ms on layaway. Now, I have to say, <laughs> have you tried to buy M&Ms lately? That's actually quite understandable. <laughs> <laughs> Next one, he moved the caution wet floor sign to the carpeted area. Okay, lame, but yeah. The next one was set up a tent in the camping department, told children shoppers he'd invite them in if they would bring pillows and blankets from the bedding department, to which 20 children obliged. See, <laughs> he was providing daycare. Next one was when a clerk asked if they could help him, he began crying and screaming, why can't you people leave me alone? To which the EMTs were called. I could see that happening. Then the next one was he looked right into the security camera and used it as a mirror while he picked his nose. Now, that's not one of them that I've done, but we're getting to them. <laughs> okay, next one. While handling guns in the hunting department, he asked the clerk, where are the antidepressants? That's not these days. Yeah, that would get you shot. Okay, here we go. This is one I have actually done with my youngest daughter. He darted around the store suspiciously while loudly humming the Mission Impossible theme. <laughs> I have done that. Um, yeah. Next one, went into the auto department and he practiced his Madonna look by <laughs> using different sizes of funnels. I have done that one too. <laughs> wow. In front of people? <laughs> Yeah, wow. in front of people. Like, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. Um, wow. <laughs> next one was hid in the clothing rack, and when people browse through, he'd yell, pick me, pick me. Okay, my youngest daughter has done that. Um, the next one, another one that I have, yeah, and my sister ran away from me. I don't know why. When an announcement came over the loudspeaker, he assumed the fetal position and screamed, oh, no. It's the voices again. Although I did not assume the fetal position. I covered my ears and I ran in a circle screaming that. And my sister ran away with the shopping cart. I have no idea why. And then uh, the next one is took a box of condoms <laughs> to the checkout clerk and asked where the fitting room was. <laughs> I could. I know people that I think would do that. And finally, the last straw was when he went into the fitting room, shut the door, waited a while, and then yelled very loudly, hey, there's no toilet paper in here. Hmm. <laughs> Words to live by. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. Thank you. And I and I thought I had a strange life. <laughs> Apparently, I ain't no competition for little Miss Mary. Yeah. Ooh. So well, 
you laughed at me when I asked you what you're going to do with all your spare time now that you're going to be free of radio. Yeah, well, I just gave you a few little hints on oh. what I might be trying now. Hey, you're going to be a professional Walmart shopper? I, oh, uh, you know, that would be almost tempting to see how many Walmarts I could get kicked out of. Wow, I wonder what the record is for. I thought they were turning Walmarts into uh, some kind of camps for all the poor people. Oh, just select ones. Or is that just a load of shit, too? All these rumors and stories. Probably is. It's a cleanup on aisle three kind of thing. Who knows, yeah. who knows what is really going on? You know, because you got 3,000 miles wide, 15 some places, 100 miles, you know. <laughs> there you go. It's It's a big freaking place. And you can make up stories and tell people. And they'll believe Oh, them. yeah. And the stories get told, but... Nobody seems to need any proof. They just go along with a story. What the fuck is wrong with everyone? <clears throat> are, um, is, are, are we broken as a collective, or is it just me that doubts what I hear? No, it's just taken lots and lots and lots and lots of years to get us to this point. Well, okay, um, well, I disagree with that, because I grew they? up through the Kennedy days, and when they were telling Kennedy, uh, telling us... Kennedy was shot with the magic bullet and all this crap. The fucking public bought it, even back then, enough to let it slide and become what it is today. So, in my opinion, they had their fucking chance to stop this shit when they shot Kennedy, and the public didn't take it. Oh, dear one. It, th no, I'm talking centuries of this shit going on. There's This has been a, a long-range plan. Right, you know, those that we've... pull these kind of things off... They have. They do not have short-range plans. We, we've only had the ability to communicate in large masses in a short period of time for about the last eight, 70 years. It's all brand new. It's not old stuff, Mary. And now today, oh, no. No. now today, we got the upper hand with their fucking very weapon against us, the internet, and people are still bowing to this fucking system like it's the only thing there is. And whenever I go against it, I get a sheep herder come at me verbally and put me back in my place where I belong because, well, you're married to Cirque. Well, that doesn't mean I'm in the game. That just means I'm married to Cirque. Okay. So I got I got a response to Hagrid. Yeah. Uh -oh. Hagrid wants a job as a custom bra fitter. Hagrid moved to France. My French teacher said that when you go over there, there's, there's stores over there that when you go there to purchase those undergarments, that a, um, a customer assistance person will come up and do a squeeze on the boobs and then bring you the bra that fits. So move to France if you want to be a custom oh. bra fitter. I've, I've helped them here, I believe. We've got uh, barmen to give them a boob job. Oh, uh -huh. well, so he'll ha no, he needs to have a moob job. Boob job. Well, man, man boobs. Okay, but see, just like everything else, Miss Mary, there is, and what? you know what a fan of the boob I truly am. I yes. listen and pay attention to all the boob information on the internet. And the uh -huh. latest the latest news is the bra is not a healthy thing for the boob. And this is from a female doctor's perspective. And yeah. she claimed and the underwire. Yeah, the underwire. Oh, that, they that was, was your put show. There to help support. Yeah. There you go. It was yeah. you doing the. Yeah, it was you doing the the link. Yeah. But see, I yeah. agree. I agree with the most obscure things I can't prove because I'm a guy. But logic tells me stuff. You know, like I'm going to be 60 and I'm I'm still not, you know, worn out physically yet. So I. Tribute that to being active as active as I am, which isn't all that much, but you know enough to stay fit. Yeah. Shall we say? Well, if I tried harder, I'd get a better result, but I'm far too lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we are not laughing with you, Flash. <laughs> we are laughing at you. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know. If I gave it more effort, I'd get a better result. But I'm not, I'm not that uh, all about me. You know what I'm saying me. or not? The ego in me is huge, but at a mental level, not at a physical level. Hey, we you know? could we 
could uh, write a song about that. Me and no, you can. I ain't writing a fucking song. My ego. Country and western my lyrics ego. don't come out of me. Ego. Hey, so seriously, here's yeah. a good song. It's a song that takes you home to the heart. Okay, what I'll be right back. I need to t let something out. Okay, he's gonna go play with his cactus. Uh, yes, this is a song from uh, Jeremy Frankham. He he lived out in Mesquite and. Uh, over in Overton, it's called a small town kid. And I linked it there in the chat earlier uh, for the Amazon. I, that was my review with five stars to a song that, and it, it talks about that. What I was talking about earlier about what it is to be American. And I also list, put the uh, YouTube link in the chat. I'll put them back in there again. Oh, thank you. And Hagrid, how do you know that your man boobs are better than mine? Well, yeah, your man boobs are better than mine because I don't have man boobs. So there you go. You win by default. <laughs> there it is. Go over and, and give that boy a, a thumbs up if you like country music and uh, click subscribe. Maybe make a comment in there. And uh, if you're of a mind to pay 99 cents to support somebody, you can go get over to Amazon and uh, leave them a review. Country music. Okay. Does it have a dog? And mama and a train and a truck. Well, not in this song, but there is trucks and uh, dogs and federal guards and that sort of thing. Huh. I'll have to check it out after the show. Yeah, mm. it's a good song. Oh, now you guys are playing music while we're live. Whoa. No, We've no, hit no, a new he's low. Just sharing I, links. I'm promoting yeah. it. You know, I like to promote people. And, uh, so I just, just discovered this kid. We had a, we had a long, good drawdown conversation over in the uh, comment section on a post there on facebook and uh being that i'd, I'd lived up there in the same part of the world as he uh, uh talked about clyde the camel and i used to go hang out here me and my buddies would go up there and drink with him oh he'd drink he drank a hard alcohol too yeah. and uh, when when i was spending my 40 days in the desert on the virgin river i'd went to mesquite to the museum there and i talked to the uh the people that work in there and so they didn't know some of the stories about Clyde, and I was able to uh, fill in a little history. And uh, I guess they've uh, added that somehow to the archives of uh, history. Clyde the Camel. He's Clyde, dead. Clyde the Camel. Yeah. He lived in Arrowhead, did, Nevada. Did you right kill him? Did you kill him? No. Did you make him commit suicide? No. We were friends. Have you now, or have you ever worked for the CIA? Listen, uh, let me let me just say that this much. Now, talking about hanging people, about uh, this same time in life, this guy decided he does not want to live anymore, and he was going off himself. And I thought, well, I better uh, take a hold and guide this situation along. Hmm. And I said, well, I'll help you. Uh, uh, so what we did was we got him in the closet and uh, tied a rope around his neck and I put him in a chair with his knees on it. And I said, reach behind you and grab your ankles and hold on. Mm. And he just reached back there. I dumped the chair and I dropped him straight down to the, to the ground. And he hit his knees before he had time to relax and, and stretch his neck a little bit. Mm. It takes a lot of force to break them bones in the neck, you know? Oh yeah. So yeah. 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 I think yeah, somebody that's going to kill somebody or kill themselves probably better know what needs to be done. Like, uh, Epstein, do it right. Talking about, you know, there's that no was an Epstein that died though. I don't think oh, and he could not have broke his neck in that. There's no way he could break them bones in his neck. And that's what I was talking about, what we're hearing on the news. Not, mm. I don't follow it. I hear what they're saying, to, mm. why they're saying it. So they're talking about how mm. uh, possible it is. The possible, older, yeah. The news ladies, ha, ha, ha. Of course, I'm like 69 and you know, 100 years plus or so, whatever she said. He wasn't. Uh, I'm not. Mm. Yeah, so. He was a whippersnapper or something, but uh, but still, it was possible that he could have broke his own bones in his neck. Yeah, you guys want to make fun of the United States for a few minutes? Uh, I'm just I was just bragging about. Yeah, it. I, I know, but I want to, I want to change gears. I'm going to post something in the in the RLM. You do it, okay? okay. Now I haven't read the thing. I only read the headline, and I don't like entertainers. I don't care for Bill Maher or any of that shit. I just got the headline and I went, wow, are these people are freaking actually saying this stuff and putting it to ink. Well, because it's, you know, there's going to be an awful lot of collateral damage, but it's a price I'm willing to pay. <laughs> yeah, you're real 
fucking willing to pay it, you sorry sack of you-know-what, because hmm. you're not going to be the one that's actually picking up the tab. Everybody well, else is, but it's a price you're willing to pay. Okay, well, I didn't you mean to get you little. mad, Mary. I just wanted to... Well, it, it infuriates the hell out of me how all of these people step out and they do all this wonderful, well, you know, a recession would be worth it if it means getting rid of Trump. Why? What the fuck? Aww. Yeah, see, what it just fuels the illusion that Trump does make any fucking difference. He doesn't make any difference in any of this. He's not deciding to do fucking shit. There's people telling him what to what to do. No one man Actually, could make. He the, does make a difference, but not in that direct, in-your-face kind of way. He makes a difference by the <laughs> by what people interpret of his words and his actions. That's the difference that he makes. When it comes to freaking government, oh, come on. These people, well, Trump's been in here for two years, and it's all oh, this is his fault, and this is that. That's his fault. What about the 30 years wow. you've been in Congress? Yeah. You right. weren't to blame for yeah. any of this shit? Yeah. Well, and yet, when we you put it, bring it right back down even more responsible-wise, excuse me. Yeah, but what... Get what, into a voting booth and what select is, these freaking morons and leave them in there. Guess who? Who's got the biggest? But dose Mary, of responsibility? what does a recession have to do with getting rid of Trump? Where is it, just because the economy is in recession? What does that have to do with Trump? It doesn't have a damn thing. But they're, you know, these these people don't give a shit about logic. They don't give a shit about. Facts. All mm. they give a shit about is putting stuff out there that will get someone in the fields. Thank you very much, Bill Maher. I allowed you to get me in the fields because it freaking pisses me off. You guys are goddamn morons. And there's idiots out there that go, hey, damn. Well, he may be right. Oh, pfft, please. You have some gray cells mm. up there between your ears. Why don't you try using them? Okay, Oy. but I mean, this guy's threatening somebody with this statement that he made it obviously it upset you now how it hit me I, I just saw it as how is a financial crisis going to change who's sitting in the white house that's good all got, the time huh it's, just it's the federal reserve bank that's doing all this shit not trump that's trump's right. a nobody yeah but there's, there's a lot of people that don't know that and they will Basically, the only job of the POTUS is to be a mouthpiece and a face on a dartboard. We're well, the same but, people that are in and running the Federal Reserve. But who, so who, okay, but Vinny, who has more experience on kissing banker ass than Donald fucking Trump? I wouldn't call it that. I would. Why call not? It That's what he did in the 70s. No, no. That's no, no, what he, happened. He bailed New York out of their depression by going into debt with these banks to build these fucking buildings he was promising okay, so to build. What you're doing here is he's not kissing their ass. It's he's teaching people how to kiss his ass by having banks kiss his ass. Banks don't kiss his ass. What are you talking about? He's it's all a matter of steering. There's a, all connected together. Well, he, he's not like, no, he's not even very smart. No, um, absolutely not. No, not at all. But what does smart got to do with the fucking point I'm trying to make about Trump man. has nothing to do with the economy. It's That's the Federal con. Reserve. Con, though, what they say is, see, not remembering. It's not what they're saying, but why are they saying it? That's yeah. what you got to look at. Yeah, it's the motivation right. behind the words. Give me yes. an That's example great. for, you know, for yeah. the slow guy like me. Be You're slow. Okay. Show, show me what you mean. They say, oh, we're going to affect the economy. We're going to change the presidents. They do it all the time. Jim, Jimmy Carter, you know, what? What is he known best for besides selling the uh, Panama Canal or giving it away? What's he best known a for? Peanut farmer. Well, I, I don't know. To me, my answer would be in, uh, in his autobiography, uh, he says that he wasn't going to appoint these same old insiders and you know what? Who we get from his same cabinet. old fucking shit, just same like they always old. do. Yeah. People don't learn from shit. I mean, I don't. Where is hmm, where is the uh, support to this day 
I mean, for fuck's sake, after after uh, Nixon got finished, I was like 14, and I went, oh, this crap's a bunch of shit. You know, he was mad, mad, <clears throat> mad about it when uh, mm. he, he did, uh, debated with uh, Kennedy, and he, he was all, like, blended in. He had a light suit on, a light black, uh, background, and, and Kennedy uh, had the dark suit on, so he stood out. And he had not given consideration to the modernism of television completely, neither as far as that propaganda piece that it is. So, uh, you know, we, we can see how these people have learned and how they use the, uh, uh, the medium to manipulate the masses. Well, it's still working today, Vinny. Because, yeah. I mean, yeah. if this guy, Bill Maher, TV guy, can say... What does double down mean in the first place? But a recession is worth it if it means getting rid of Trump. And I'm telling you, the people at the bar, they laugh at Trump. They, they don't take him serious. There's, there's nothing threatening in Denmark about Donald Trump. He's a clown. Well, right. But see, in the Middle East, where you're bombing the fuck out of people, he's a That's threat. That's not funny at all. Huh? Yeah, that's that's very fearful and not friendly, right? Exactly, and it's just a matter of what side of that freaking uh, passport shit you're on. God, like, All right, I there was a, another. Huh? I think I'm glad I don't have one anymore. Have what? Passport. Oh, I met another Scott today. Was in the pub. There's a, a, a Scott. Yeah, he was telling me how he how he met his wife, and his Danish wife was in a pub in Inverness, Scotland, and the the two she was with a friend and the two women were talking to this guy and the first thing this guy says to the two Danish women is derogatory about England. And this guy's a Scot and instead of siding with his brother Scott, he told the girls don't don't pay attention to this this nonsense. And he ends up marrying one of the two girls. What did, what was the word said? What what did he say? I don't know. Some fuck the English and the Scots fight, man. I don't fucking know. Who cares? I got a story. It's for like that. the South. Uh, it's like the Sean North and the South. The, same thing. Sean Connery story. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Sean, yeah, he he lands in Vegas, right? And for some reason, his uh, limo's not available. Now, my buddy, uh, or my bro- brother's buddy, uh, Wayne. He's a he's this big old. They, they worked out together. He's this big old guy, right? And somebody shoot that duck quick! Get him! Get him! Get him! He's in the chat. Rah, rah. Oh, so back to the story. Yeah. So uh, uh, he picks up Sean Connery at the airport in Vegas, and uh, so he's just driving along, and and uh, uh, he's talking to him, and he says, "You you fine gentleman, and I'll get your your bet done on the English uh, cup." And he says, "We're not English." He said, I think F in English. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're bloody squats, he says. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This point. Yeah, so anyways, <clears throat> Wayne talks like Rocky. Oh, yeah. You, you gentlemen. So is anybody going to get this duck or what? There's a loose duck in the chat. I don't Somebody know. You're chatting after. about something over Fair, here. I just got befriended nothing to do with it. a duck. Because I am building a duck army. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <after> <laughs> fucking duck. Listen, they make messes. Crap everywhere. Ducks are bad. Kill or capture that's my policy. Okay, well, I don't know what that's got to do with the recession getting well, rid of Trump, up. but whatever, uh, well, Vinny. I'm on to the, I was following up on the Scott story. We have our very own Scotsman here, hmm. Mr. JJ's nine. Yeah, I know that. What, what are you yeah. telling me that I don't know? Well, I Inform don't know. Inform me, man. Inform me. Well, I don't know. Oh. Well, okay, so. Uh, explore the mind of the Scotsman. And we're going to lift the kilt and take a look underneath, if you will, and find out what really makes a Scotsman, what what no good Scotsman will ever do. No good Scotsman. Okay. You're going to lift his kilt? You're a pervy bugger. Well, so, you know, Bill Clinton and uh, Donald Trump and Nancy Pelosi are in this big old tornado. And they get taken away and they wake up and they're in the land of Oz. Uh, guess what? Nancy comes to and she says, I'm going to go see the wizard and I'm going to get a heart. Donald Trump looks up and he says, oh, I'm going to go see the wizard and I'm going to go get me a brain. And Bill Clinton looks up and says, where the fuck is Dorothy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slick Willie. 
corn dog that he is. Ugh. I thought the dork table needed a dork joke, so I threw one out yes, there it did. for you. Thank you You're for the dork joke. welcome. Dork table dork. alert. What? I felt like uh, inter- I felt like interrupting and telling a terrible joke. And there you go. You Ma- just do that. Mike told me to go duck myself. I'm not so sure I can. <laughs> it sounds rather enticing, but I'm not sure how it works. Maybe quack, if you quack, described quack, it. Quack, 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 quack. And what exactly does go fuck yourself mean anyway? And, you know, I never really understood the term. And I've used the term because I'm used to hearing it. But, you know, when you try to sit down and define what that means, it how could it end badly? <laughs> I don't know, but you know what? <laughs> what a way to go. Hey, died. How did he die? He fucked himself to death. <laughs> I'm, what? I'm scrolling on Twitter here, yeah. as you know. I have a tendency to do that. And there's a post here from the Babylon Bee. <laughs> and <laughs> it's for a new article. Snopes rates Babylon Bee world's most accurate news source. <laughs> world's most accurate. Why is that funny? Because Babylon B is a satirical site. Oh, the, and okay. Snopes is just a couple of it's Same a couple thing, yeah. with a cat. Whatever it is. And they say it is opinion. they're experts on fact finding. Experts. They're a bunch of shit. Yeah, but you can write whatever you want to and people can believe sure it or can. not. There sure you go. You can. It's their story and a there lot of go. people believe it. But I just think it's funnier than hell that Babylon B decided to <laughs> write an article. Yeah. Snopes rates them the world's most accurate news source. That's hilarious. That's that's why I try to stay out of touch with reality at all costs. Well, see, that's why I like Babylon Bee, because that's got to be one of the best damn sites ever. <laughs> well, now that you're going to retire from the radio and not do links, I guess me and Vinny will have to pick up the link slack. We're, sure you You're going to have to give me a good insight on where I can find your, your links, because some of your links are just fucking funny as shit. Oy. And some of them are informative, and some of them... Eh. You know, but that's my, you know, my indoctrination interpreting your inf- your input. There you go. I'll see. Now I'll be able to just post them in the chat <laughs> the, the, instead of putting them in my pocket and then going, okay, I'll get to this on the radio, and then I don't get to it on the radio, so it just sits there and lingers in my pocket. <laughs> you could always put you could always put stuff on the wire for me for my shows if you'd like. I could do that, too. I I just put that Snopes link in the chat. I don't have a lot of luck with finding good typed links. I don't know why. But when I need them the most, they're not there. Ah. I'm I'm a grasshopper. I am not, you know, I'm not organized with with this radio thing. It's just pretty much off the cuff and whatever I feel like talking about. Agreed, Hagrid. Yeah, satire is often the truth. And that's, you know, that's why it's like, this is just too freaking funny. Yeah, you know what? Moose True. Moose hates my sarcasm, though. She's always reprimanding me in the chat about my sarcastic tone because I refuse to take things seriously. So. Well, you know, and I always revert back to the old Star Trek with that... that energy being that that had the Klingons and the Enterprise crew yeah. fighting just Ooh. because it fed off of the energy. negative yeah. energy. Ooh. That's what Sir you know, calls the void. So the way, they, the way they defeated that energy, they didn't kill it, mm. but they defeated it and it left because they started laughing Starving. at it. So laugh at yeah. everything. Why not? Oh, we do plenty of that at the dork table. Even Vinny does. I make Vinny laugh once in a while when I'm not picking on him for being imperfect. Damn it, Flash. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, so, oh he wait, 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 wait. I got to re-interrupt here. Going back, I, I just love how things come together. But my Aunt Nancy out in Vegas, uh, she tagged me on, guess what? Small what? town kid, a post from the Bundy Ranch. And... uh there's a little bit he wrote here. He says, my name is Jerry Frankham. I once called Mesquite home for a portion of my childhood, lived in Overton, Nevada for the rest of it. Back in 2014, while the, gra- while the land grab situation was unfolding in Bunkerville, 
I wrote a song called Small Town Kid. I've hoped to be in the position to share it with you in the years since writing it, <clears throat> excuse me, as Clive was such a huge inspiration for its creation. I'm finally in the position to do so. I hope you enjoy it. It's available everywhere, iTunes, Amazon Music, Spotify, Google Play, and even YouTube. Soon it'll be on many more sites like Pandora, iHeartRadio, and so forth. I hope it'll be as a special to your family as it is to mine. And I'd be honored if you made it public on your page and shared a, a link or post about it. However, the more, more than anything, I wanted to make it available to the people who inspired so much of it. Shout out to the Bundys. That's right. Uh, and uh, standing in the gap. That's uh, what you're talking about when we first started out. Flash. What are we? Uh, what position are we taking in this life? And uh, what do we do to make this world a better place? Do we have an obligation and duty to do that? We have the right and the duty and the obligation to stand as a buffer, stand in the gap to, to uh, be a difference between uh, the aggression of evil and wrongdoing. And I say we do. And what? how can you do it with uh, anything? A song. That's great right there. A smile. Uh, a kind word. And sometimes it takes a lot more and uh, more special people that actually go and put themselves in a physical place to prevent uh, bad things from happening. But we can also influence good things, too. Yeah, but the bad things that you speak of are done on purpose by choice, you know, and that's the difference in it. So what what I think that the society lacks is the self-responsibility for keeping yourself in a sane frame of fucking mind where it's not normal to go out and barbecue somebody on a spit and eat them. See, that's, that's what it comes down to. It just, it comes down to a mindset shift, you know, instead of this whole, it's a dog eat dog world. No, it's not. It's a, let's go out and lay down underneath the tree and make, you know, think of oh hey that cl that cloud up there looks like a duck oh that one looks like donald trump that one looks like donald trump and a duck all together you know, that's, that's ugly. what you know well it would it would be funny you know Ooh. if you if you picture donald trump's face on a duck body that would be funny i Ouch. think and i think Clouds no that's just typical because he's got that duck ass haircut well see i i he think he looks ducky to me already so well, no, yeah. you don't have far see, to go. People are so concerned and it's, mm. it comes from that whole, as you put it, mm. scar scarcity, which is false. Mm -hmm. There is no such critter as no, scarcity. It's, it's man-made every all, time. Yeah. It's all a, a controlled, you know, those yeah. that control what is out there. Yeah. And, and then it also goes back to the whole monetary system where I decide that this is worth so much. And so you're going to have to, why do we have to have monetary? And I, I get that we are here. I get that it took centuries to get us here. But why can't we just set an example? Because that's how children learn. Children don't learn by what we say. Children learn by how we behave. And they, they are little mimics of their parents. But, well, I would... You know, so in, instead of going out there and, and talking big talk and... and you know, supporting this whole financial system that's a whole <laughs> bunch of hooey anyway, because all it is is just a bunch of paper with colors on it. You know, so instead of supporting that stuff, start going, you know what? You need some of this, and, and I got some. Here, have some. And you're right, And it's, too. it's just... It's learning to share again oh, you and get not it. saying that my stuff's better than your stuff. So yeah. my stuff's worth more than your stuff. Well, it's the matter. Everybody's matter stuff is worth, you know, George Carlin <laughs> said it best. Yeah. He said, my stuff is stuff and your stuff is shit. Mm. And that's, that's a mindset thing that really needs to be changed. Instead of it's my stuff, stuff and yours is shit. How about my stuff is stuff and your stuff is stuff and we both have way cool stuff and if you want to share yours, great. And if you don't, great. Because I have stuff. See how what that about works. HR puffing stuff. Yeah, hey, man, Rob I'll tell works. you what, they were stoned on acid coming up with that well, shit. <laughs> okay. And I was telling the I telling you earlier, I, I met a Scott and another uh, Scott in town today, married to a Dane. 
And do, do a, hey, do a, do a Scott impersonation. I don't do Scott impersonations. But uh, his name is Lawrence. I don't do a Sean Connery. And he's not a Scott anyway, is he? I thought he was Welsh. No, wait. That's Tom Jones. I don't know. I'm really bad with all the names and stuff. But anyhow, so yeah. Uh, Vinny kind of interrupted my flow of cheese. Now I'm You're off the welcome. topic. Hey, You're welcome. We're going to call it Noggin Juice. Mm-hmm. Noggin Juice. Noggin juice? Yes, it's like ambrosia for zombies. Oh. How many zombies do you know? It's called Food of the Zogs. Wait a minute. How many fucking zombies do you know? Well, well, let's define zombie. You define it. You're the one that used it. Well, I'm bringing all this into relation because Ireland and Scotland are so close together in their opposition towards uh, Great Britain. We're in Denmark. What difference does that make? This guy's... You're talk- I'm not in Denmark. No, the Scott I was I talking about to today sure. lives <laughs> in Denmark in Freetown. Or Freetown. In Freddytown. Okay, we're talking right here about we're- Scotsman and uh, Sean Connery and... Uh-huh. Right. People like that. Yeah. You know, okay. I wrote. So we get to zombies, which zombies. Scotland brought me to Ireland <laughs> and the song Zombie in 1916. And yeah. so it brought me into a big old mm-hmm. circle. Ouch. So Vinny's mind just did a six degrees of separation thing. I have no idea. Boom. I don't know, but Cowboy is posting Japanese say you have three faces. Circle. I think no, so. That's cool, isn't it? Well, I think so, similar to that, that you show different people different parts of you. And I you're, wish I'd have You're that. never going to find anybody that you're going to ever be 100% you around. You always hold back a little something, That's I think. Cool. You know, there's a lot of people that aren't even them with themselves. Yeah, we, we engage them on the reallibertymedia.com chat daily sometimes. You know, but, you know, freedom of speech being what it truly is, you can complain and you can do all kinds of horrible shit back. But that's just life. It's freedom. Freedom has a bumpy side to it sometimes. Freedom. You well, that is? What, what I'm saying, Vince, is sometimes being free is not the most comfortable way to be. That the, the comfort comes in when the when the uh, law enforcement forces people to behave how you tell them to behave otherwise you've got you know verbal chaos or in society sometimes you have violent chaos but for the most part we're we're not a bunch of idiots for the most part so you got to figure where does the encouragement to get violent come from what inspires somebody in the world you know in society to get into a group and be a violent force against a, a another group, what what encourages that? Fear. So, so if if I'm living in a place that doesn't have a, a outside physical expression of fear, I'm in an advantage, right? Okay, yeah. now what? Well, when I pass strangers in the street, they smile and nod at at me as I go by them. There's Uh a a social cordial thing here when you're, you know, unless you're completely shy and withdrawn, you make some, you nod or you say hi or something. And the people that are just shy and, you know, self-conscious don't. There's a, like one out of 10 of them. And the rest of them will say hey to everybody. And, you, you know, they don't, when you're passing it's common here. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not common where I'm from. Grew up in a crowded fucking, you know, L.A. where there was plenty of people. So saying hey to everybody, I wasn't Crocodile fucking Dundee. But now I am. <laughs> but I wasn't then. You know? Too many people. I got to go make a thing. But when you see, and, and yeah. I grew up where everybody made eye contact. Yeah, exactly. And either exactly. smiled or yeah. nodded or whatever. And so when I go to the big city and I make eye contact and I smile or say hi or people nod freak. or whatever. Yeah. People yeah. And people yeah. start, you know, doing a wide berth around me. And it's like, what? okay, yeah. well, at least I have a safe zone. 
<laughs> yeah, because yeah, because you're scary, because you're nice, and nobody's nice unless they want something. And what I found out about the small community is, well, away from uh, where I'm from, is they're just less uh, negative all the time at about every fucking thing. Yeah. There's a lot well, less to be angry about here in my daily life when I'm outside the house than there ever is where I'm from. There was always something to piss you off. Too much traffic, too loud, too hot, too cold, too something. And to find a balance was pretty hard at the end for me. Hot cloud. Cough. <laughs> you know, the but. weather, this, the, the, you know, everything was so extreme in the States. And even the most extreme here doesn't. It doesn't uh, compare. <laughs> this is a lot milder place for me physically than it was where I'm from. Yeah. Yeah. Well, geez, America's nice? huge. I got, I don't know, what do you call that? Hello. I think I've adapted pretty much to my surroundings to make the best of it. But it's a mental thing. You know, you can, I could go the other way. I could go all Jew. You know, you cannot be me and Jew at the same time, sir. Yeah, I could. You, I could go all Jew on Cirque and tell her I want to move back to America, and yeah, and if I did that, she'd, you know, married to me. She have to go. So it's her contract. She said she would, but I, I, look, I won't hold her up to it. But I've got she, you nothing. Know. Flash. What? Here in chat, just for you. Uh, Why even saying such a thing? Ah, uh, he hit me with a fish. But I was threatening to take my wife to the my my fatherland where I am from. But you, Kyle, I huh? Kyle, so I I did really don't have an, any intention to do that. Do you? you yeah, did. but you know, Flash, you can't go totally Jewy anyway because you ain't totally Jewy. You're you're spicky too. It, it's a terminology, Miss Mary. Not Jewish yeah. anyway, sir. Uh, it's because Aryan descent. Well, let me explain this Why? to you. Nobody's fucking brown is from the Mexican, so you yeah. can't. It's a word game, Vinny. It's three... a Mexican it... and a Mexican. It's three card Monty in words is all that we're doing. Religion, education, and politics, and they got you in a trap because most human life people will bond to one of those three things, if not all of them. Well, listen, so, let's do a it, little scenario. What? Say you're walking through the woods to the creek, and uh, hmm. you come upon this guy, and he sees you coming, and he quickly puts his hat over something, hmm. clamps it down. Hmm. What, what are you going to think? Well, I'm going to think he's got a weapon, of course. Under his hat? Sure. Why would he hide his weapon? If he's going to have a weapon, would he use it? And just pull I've it seen out? 57 movies. I don't know. Because that was the first thing I thought of hiding a weapon, probably. I just Something under your hat. Social experiment. Well, yeah. Wh why can't I see your hands if you don't have a weapon in the first place? But whatever. Okay. That's all. See, I'm and I think he's covering up a rabbit so that when he picks up his <laughs> hat, he can go, "Look, I got a rabbit in my hat." <laughs> now see who's from the country and who's from the city. You know. <laughs> And what voice will you hear it in? Hey, flashes, what's oh, the did I ask you guys that question? <laughs> but wait, wait. <laughs> Vinny, I was thinking about that again today. And I don't know if I asked you guys this on the dork table. I think I did. If I did, we didn't go too far with it. I want to try it again. You know that voice or whatever it is in your mind when you're thinking of things and you're understanding your thoughts, they come back to you. You have a thought and it says blah, 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 blah. Right now, is that engagement for you? Is that uh, something that you hear, or is it like there's people that can see numbers in their head? When you ask them to add certain numbers, add these numbers together, they can do that, and they see the number finished in their head physically. Do you, how do you see your inner voice? Um, Who are you asking? Uh, Both yeah, of you. Me or the Ponder Gander? Both of you. Of no, no, no. I'm just whoever's on the show here. Vinny or I Miss have Mary. different voices. That, yeah. What is your theme song? Do you have a theme song? <laughs> Do you have a soundtrack to your life? Mm -mm. No, no. You, do you want to know what a th what my theme song is? And I don't. It's okay. For right now, <laughs> at least the last 
couple of weeks. This has been my theme song. That song by the Carpenters, Sing, Sing a Song, that yeah. has been playing in my – it's like a brain worm. <laughs> and I'll be, out, I'll be out pulling weeds, and then all of a sudden that song will just start playing in my head. Well, yeah, and the but, next thing you know, I'm pulling weeds, and I'm kind of jamming out there in the yard. And But I meant more so, like, Mary, when, when you're thinking about a, an, an idea of some kind or another, uh, you're balancing something, you're adding numbers, you're trying to find an answer to a question in your mind when you're alone, right? Uh -huh. And while you're thinking, whatever process that is for you, it's different from how I do it. But in my mind, I believe it's it's not audible. I mean, I don't hear, but it's the equivalent of hearing a voice when I'm thinking in my mind about whatever I'm thinking about. When I'm in solitude, when I'm around Jan, you I, guys. I see it. I see okay, things. Okay, that's I, what I, I want. images. Wow. Okay. I I have uh I have something special for you, Miss Mary. Right here. But wait, uh, like it? wait. So like if if I give you a math equation, you see the final answer in in your in your mind's eye in a in a numerical sequence. Yeah. Well, my grandpa could do that. My grandpa could could do figures mm -hmm. um, faster in his head than people could on a calculator. Right, because they visually and there's some. It's the same as seeing something, but it's in your own mind, right? Yeah. That's what I mean. Is I hear my stuff, and you you see your stuff. Well, yeah. It, isn't that? I find that quite interesting to tell you that I'm, that must be the dork in me, because. To, well, it is fascinating what's going on inside people's heads and how how they internalize and how they communicate with themselves. Yeah. Does that lead you to think that there's more ways that are available to us than we're ever taught to do whatever it is we want to do? Like that nonsense oh. about we only use 10% of our brain crap. Why would a yeah. society that's claiming to be the you know, the smartest animal on the planet and this, that, and the have such a disastrous fucking track history to prove it. It's flawed. But yet it claims to be superior to other shit that it doesn't even, it doesn't even compare to. <laughs> See, and that, to me, that was a, that was a subtle form of misinformation and control and, and holding, holding people down. You know, was was saying, well, you know, you only use ten percent of your brain. Ah, bullshit! You use your whole freaking brain. Mm. You may only use like ten percent of your capability. Or conscious. But that's I was because, thinking it's conscious. That's because you limit yourself. Well, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, me too. Hold on, real quick. Is mm. this the evolution then? So oh, if you don't have the full capacity at use, does this mean that what? Where'd you get all this extra? No, at? Where'd it, it come from? It, it doesn't necessarily mean that you, you know, hmm. see, I know an awful lot of people that uh, are quote unquote disabled, hmm. you know, whether it be physically or mentally. And I'll tell you what, there's some of them that it's like, holy shit. So I think the biggest problem is, is people are judging by some kind of whatever normal standard there is out there. And there is no freaking such thing as normal except for a setting on the dryer and a town in <laughs> Illinois. You know, there's yeah. no such critter as normal. Everybody does things differently. And, and stop <laughs> stop trying to pigeonhole everybody into, you should, you should do it like this, just like everyone else. Well, what if that doesn't work for you? I know. What if this works for you? And then when you do it your own way, you get it done 20 bazillion times faster than... Well, you should do it this way. That's why they have public education. So yeah, but get everybody. Does being left-handed help you or hurt you in this area? Help you see it I better? Then are left-handed people more likely to be in tune with the truth than than right-handed people? Well, left-handed people are in the right frame of mind. Ah, uh, well, I don't, ba okay, well. Well, because the right side, your right, right side of your brain controls the left side of your body. So, but I'm not a true left-handed person. 
I mean, oh. I write with my left hand. I eat with my left hand, mm. but pretty much everything else I do right-handed. Because oh. I was slapped into being predominantly right-handed. See, and they tried to do that to my brother Danny back when we were going to Catholic school and all those evil penguins. Yeah. And they were tying his left hand behind his back. And, man, when Mother found out about that, talk about a mama bear going off on a bunch of penguins. Holy yeah, but crap and that's, holy. that's the difference between a parent doing it, though, and the system. Because my parent did it. So I didn't have anybody to go to. I was already right. there. 421. Yeah, I'll load it up right now. But, you know, there was nobody to defend me. And if anybody did verbally, you know, hey, try to stop my father, he'd tell him, you want to take his place. And they all backed down. So nobody ever stood up to, you know, to my dad for me on my behalf. Hmm. How does that make you feel? Wow, uh, today, I don't know, it makes me feel anything. It's just a statistic, you know, it's something that... Why if, do you hate your mother? <laughs> yeah, it's something that if you haven't been through that experience with a, a parental unit, then you might see a different outcome than I do. Because do I was know, raised by a maniac. Feel about you? Huh? And do you feel uh, other people feel this way about you? I don't care what other people feel about me except Cirque. What difference does how you feel about me matter? You're not in the room. If you're in the and room, it, it would matter. And if you ever posted in pictures in the uh, uh, blue, was it a blue blue dress and red shoes? Or Me? I oh, good what Lord. What are you talking like, about? We... <laughs> uh, does Jeffrey Epstein have any dirt on you? Oh, I I doubt it. But see, none of that no, dirt on everybody, didn't he? All the politicians. None people. of that. See, none of that um, celebrity shit appeals to me, and it hasn't for a long time. I didn't just start out down on it on the system. I've been down on it for a long time. So the celebrity thing wore off, you know, a long time ago. Popular names and Jeff. I don't. I got this history to go on. That when something something new comes up, I compare it to the old shit, and it's usually just a rerun of something that's already been done. Yeah, well, everything's already been done at least once. What, what's and your if it works? What's your favorite false flag, Mary? Or do you have one? Or maybe not favorite, <laughs> but maybe all right. It was a dorky way to ask it, but. All right, of the false flags that you're familiar with in America, which one stands out to you as the most, the first thing that pops to your head? The, the concept that someone in a government thousands of miles away knows what's better for me than what I do. That, to me, is the biggest false flag out there. So many people buy it, and they buy it because of medicine, and they don't understand that the food. No, you been... know why they buy it? They buy it because they're freaking lazy. Oh, because that. it's 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 that plausible deniability. It's that whole well, you know, the government says I have to. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's an excuse. It's an out, and I just I look at it as oh piffle. You know. I don't, I don't think, you know, and even when I was on, on city council, mm -hmm. it was like, okay, I am one voice here. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, every freaking night I was getting phone calls at home from people, and I tried to share their sentiment in the council meetings, but I was one of the few that actually shared the general public's sentiment in the council meetings. The rest of them were all, well, hey, are you going to the country club after the meeting? <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me? Nobody tried to buy you? <laughs> Pay you off? You didn't make Ac me doing this? Actually, there were a few that tried, and, and I pretty much called their bluff. What? I, I just looked at them and said, oh, really? Ah. So... What what they say do? Let's like what go golfing or let's go like eat children. Well, it was like, well, you know, if you vote for this, we can see our way clear to oh. and I don't remember exact stipulations anymore, but it it was like 
what the hell has that got to do with the price of beans in China? Right now, we are dealing with what's going on right here, right now, and what you're proposing is not beneficial for the community. It may be beneficial for like 10 or 15 people, but we got over 2,000 people living here. The, other, the rest of them are going to have to foot the bill for your 10 or 15 people. I don't think so. Are they offering to cut you in because, I mean, that's important. Well, it got to the point where they were pretty much letting me know, you know, if you don't do this, we're going to. And it's like, bring it. Did you feel like no. a redheaded stepchild? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I felt like a redheaded stepchild. And I had a freaking knot over my third eye from beating my head against that brick wall. Uh, and so every time they pulled stunts like that, um, I would write a letter to the editor. And I would just spell it out, you know, what I could discuss, what was not discussed in executive session or anything, but what I could discuss because the city clerk would not, you know, when she did the minutes, she would not include a lot of the details going into decisions. And so whenever they'd start bullying on me, it's like, fine. After about three letters to the editor, they quit. So I started having people calling well not i but people start calling the city council and the city office and saying what's this going on what's what's this with this letter and you know one of the letters that i wrote was calling out some serious bullshit and massive wasteful spending Ooh, and uh, dirty girl i turned it into the newspaper friday afternoon the newspaper got taken to be printed on Monday. I was getting phone calls Saturday evening from people telling me they were going to write um, um, letters to the editor to basically rebut what I had in my letter. And I said, oh, really? How are you going to do that? Because my letter hasn't been published yet. How do you know what's in that letter? And how did what they say? They said, uh, well, uh, well, we'll wait for it to be published, and then we'll write our letters. And I went, okay, you just do that. You just go right ahead. So and when my letter showed up in the in the newspaper, there were so many typos in it. And um, so the next newspaper, I just put a little ad in there and said, we're having a little contest. Y'all need to count all the typos or what you think were typos in that letter. And for every typo that you find, I'm going to donate $5 to the Christmas Light Fund. And I wound up donating $50 to the Christmas Light Fund. Mm -hmm. But all of those typos just happened to be something where I was quoting actual figures. You know, and so, and then there never was any rebuttal letters to the editor in the newspaper but it's like don't push me boys so who tipped Stop. them off somebody at the paper tipped them off on you that about your letter actually it wasn't somebody at the paper because i also took a copy to the city administrator to let him know this is what's going to be published i'm just doing this as a courtesy to you so you can be prepared when the newspaper comes out but this is the letter i'm writing and he went to the country club and he talked to some people and some of them were bankers and some of them were big business or business owners in the community and quite a few of them called me over the weekend and were not happy with me and one of them actually threatened to fire me and i said go ahead Ooh. you do that because i got witnesses right here that just heard you say that fire you or fire on you <laughs> fire me i was being sarcastical no i yeah. was making a I'll bad back. joke Okay. Bad joke so, time. Go ahead. You know, yeah. I, I'm one of those people that I am really, Ooh. really, really easy to get along with mm. until you start calling bullshit on something that I've actually researched. Yeah. Then you start pushing back and you start trying to bully me. Then I try. Like, okay. I've been trying. I'm doing my best. I know. You have tried to bully me and I just laugh at you. Ooh. And for the most part, that's what I do with them too. I just yeah. laugh at them and say, go ahead, bring it. But I'm the ogre of gaslight here. Don't you know who you're dealing with here? Come on. <laughs> Bow to my superior mind, damn it. <laughs> yeah, you know what I learned? I'm a gaslighter and gaslighters are dangerous freaking people. 
Ah, I'm well, very powerful. Ah, yeah, I'm very powerful, people. man. I have powers. Ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't well, know. You, know. you can't gaslight me. I, what? Hey, shh, quiet. You can't shh. because I can light my own gas, okay? But, but, but <laughs> shh, shh, shh. I have a lighter. You're not helping me, Miss Mary. Jeez. <laughs> My cause is gonna it's gonna die quickly if I don't get support from my own dork table. Come on. Boy, this is harder than getting members to join my commune. Commune? Yeah. You want... Well okay. it what do you call this uh I'm in charge well, there's only four of us, so but nobody else I'm the leader. I, I'm you, you gotta give me all your money and join my country. <laughs> I don't want to join any country. What? Why not? I don't. Countries are nonsense. Wait, when they are. <laughs> Wait a minute. Am I the only one that that believes that a country is a fiction? And until well, and until you actually take it seriously, then it leaves you alone. If you don't fuck with it, it won't fuck with you. You just got to avoid all, it. That's all part of that whole control mechanism and getting people to do the, my dog's better than your dog. Yeah, people. Uh, yeah. Signs and papers. You know, get educated. Yeah. Here's where the the traps in life, politics, religion, and education. They're, they're just ways to ID the followers. So you're always, right. you're yeah. always, it's like being in, being in the fucking military. You're in this group of special people that all recognize each other because they all did the same thing. It, it writes the name on the paper. Yeah, and, and okay, you make fun. But I'm just saying, when you're in a group of a you know, within a humanity of that size, it carries. Mine is the passport. So I've got the support of the United States of America on paper. Just because of where I was born. It has yeah. nothing to do with my personal beliefs or how I feel about fuck all. <laughs> this paper I like to call it white privilege. Yeah, well, you can I call feel it like that. Give me a cigar over. Well, what if I was what, black? What about Grammy cracker fr- privilege? I'm a Grammy cracker. I want privilege just because I go well with milk. Well, is this, there is and, some. And white make good problem. pie crust. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I know. Sorry. Cracker. Did Gra- I do that? Yeah, because you, <laughs> Grammy Grammy won't let me be the master gaslighter. Damn. <laughs> well, other people brought it to my attention, and I thought, wow, I'm going to run with this. I want to run the fucking world. I Have you be- ever gaslighted anyone, do you think? I don't know, but I've been accused of it. And, hey, if you've been accused of it, you might as well just, yeah, I did it. Because... Admiralty Court just Man, goes the highest you bidder. You were being gaslighted, sir, when they... Oh, uh, no, you don't say. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so everybody's lighting everybody's fire. <laughs> Come on, baby, light my fire. I'll pass. Yeah. Thanks for offering, but no... Wow, that sounds sounds like a circle poot going on. A what? Hey, a that's a whole new way of circling the wagons. An Urkel jerk. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hey, Look, uh oh, <laughs> I I struck Dane over here. <laughs> you know, the guy, the guy out there drilling. I'm a I'm a joke driller, not an oil driller. And and every once in a while, I strike Dane on my quest to drill for a joke. <laughs> yeah, I got a thumbs down on the last crock. <laughs> I wonder why <laughs> she doesn't always agree with my sense of humor. <laughs> huh? Imagine that. What's your next trick you're gonna play? With? <laughs> Watch you pull a rabbit out of his hat. <laughs> uh oh. Again, that trick never works. <laughs> Nook up my sleeve. Presto. <laughs> oh, I think I need a seven and a half. Yeah, Bullwinkle. I, you know who? <laughs> Bullwinkle <laughs> J. Moose. 
It's just when yeah. I when I say it like that, I think of Miss Moose, <laughs> and it's not directed at Moose. It's just coincidental that Moose it's Girl, like a winky but Bullwinkle is. Yeah, but you, it's not cool to make fun of Bullwinkle to a bullwinkle <laughs> And There are those who take Bullwinkleism to to a mental disorder, if you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know there because there is such a thing as Bullwinkleism. <laughs> there's well, if there's. If, if, if there's safe zones at universities across the United States, then I am the leader of the Bullwinkleism movement. <laughs> I am uh, I am the sitting Bullwinkle. <laughs> so you will. Have you ever seen a Bullwink? <laughs> no, I, I I don't think I've ever been that drunk. <laughs> I'm gonna ask the <laughs> Urban Dictionary though. What? That. Never mind. Oh. Okay. Stop it, Mary. Oh, <laughs> right. Jeez. Yes. Have you ever seen well, a see, I've got this thing. I, I want to, you know, I'm gonna be a leader, take the world in the right direction, uh. show them, show them where they fucked up and set them straight. But the problem is. Is I got three rules and they won't go along with the first one. <laughs> Don't read that. So disgusting. I'm living in opposition, Vincent. Don't you care about my cause? No, I'm just going for it. <sighs> oh, why? What's wrong now? Because Udi always goes to the next. Oh, that. Yeah. Okay, ain't nice. Mary, he's taken. Huh? He's taken to the. He's taken the word to a different level. Than, than the rest of us. You know, like he goes off on his uh, his tirades, how he does. I call them weaves. I got that from uh, Circle and also. Weaves. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I weave. I weave things together. Yeah, you take <laughs> you take two problems and you make eight problems out of them. Uh, Weaver. Mr. Weaver <laughs> guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading that. The definition of a bullwink. <laughs> definition of a bullwink. No, okay. yeah. Who went wow. there? <laughs> After. <laughs> oh wow! Universal. Day fun. After See? too much <laughs> anal sex, the sphincter <laughs> goes into a spasm, not unlike. <laughs> Winking. <laughs> Dirty boy. Wow. That's a, that's a butt pucker moment if I ever saw one. That's exactly what that was. Great analogy, Miss Mary. What an observation. Oh, wow. I was not la 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 la. la, la. <laughs> Man, is that Vinny doing that on the RLM? Yeah. yeah wow. Vinny's the one that did the, Vinny. the bull wink. All I'm asking is the Urban Dictionary. My. Yeah, I'm gonna, this is this from the mind of man and what my man minds. Slap Vinny, Mike. He's gone. He's off the deep end out there. Oh shit! Land. That's just too funny. You've outdorked me on the dork. Ah, the elixir from the wife. Hi. Ah. Unmannered bastard on our limb is one of Vinny's things. <laughs> okay. Wow. There's Prince. He showed up. My wife for... is being cruel to me as she brings me elixir. She should be. <laughs> well, I've got headphones on, so I could just see her grinning, but I know she made a joke. Uh, what was that? Oh, uh, that was Bubs me making something this morning. Bubs? Bubs Monkey yeah. on what? Facebook yeah, or something? Bubs Monkey. Yeah. God, see, Facebook. Why do you crazy fucking people still support Facebook? Are you nuts? I like Facebook. Of course you do, you freaking lunatics. It's funny. I, and it's one of those things where it's like, you know what? They already got all my information, so I may as well use their tool against them. That's well, I'm you having say a that. Time. I'm still trying to earn my I got kicked off a of Facebook badge. I mean, I did once, but it was only a five-day I got a timeout. Yeah, but they lose they lose uh, numbers on a, on a, uh, on a chart. So no wealth ever exchanges hands. 
They're just accounting for it electronically. <laughs> so these people, on, on because the computer says they're worth billions of dollars. Well, where are those billions of dollars that they are worth? You can't produce them. <laughs> you can just show accounting figures that represent them. But, oh, it's like I saw something not, uh, a few months back about the world owes $55 trillion, or the world is $55 trillion in debt. That's right. Number one, <laughs> the world ain't worth $55 trillion. And number not, two, who in the hell do they owe it to? The Rothschilds. And, and I, want, I want to see the actual fucking proof of that. Oh, it's, it's in printing the money, dear. Uh, yeah, well, okay. So how many Monopoly games did they have to print in order to come up with all that damn 55? Can you imagine how big a stack $55 trillion would be? Right, but there's nothing to, for us to need to imagine because we constantly have the illusion bombarding us electronically. Whether we can see it that way or not, I don't see it that way, but I identify it that way sometimes because when I get away from it, I feel differently than when I'm with it. Those no? things run to the hills. Uh, run, run, to, who? Judas Priest. Judas Priest, that's an easy answer. Yeah. Well, I'm looking right at the answer. It's Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Dio, Sabbath, Deep Purple. The usual suspects, and I just thought of Judas Priest when I heard the, what you said, so I could be wrong. I'm not a big... Uh, I'm not a big metal fan. I just know some of it. I'm not either. Been around I'll it. For the bluegrass uh, cover. <laughs> See, there it you, is. You can't. There it is. You can't. This is for print, sir. This is. Listen. What? We've got a very request mm -hmm. from our very newest uh, member of the RealLibertyMedia.com chat channel. Yeah. Thing. What are you talking about? He, did you read the chat, Prince? No. Not. Oh. Not the not the artist formerly formerly known as yeah Prince. I know Prince. <laughs> oh, Prince. Thank you, Miss Mary. <laughs> Last night. No, we're not playing music. No, 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 no. Hey, I just did it. Look, this is the magic radio. I will put it right there in Don't, a link. No, oh, in a link. There you go. Yes, but I did. Dude. That's not the same as putting it on the show. Hey, we can't I, I do those things here, to the radio. We're Get to contain ourselves within the bounds of radio that. Uh, would otherwise be taken against us. Yeah, because we don't want to get Grim in any trouble with that, any of that. Yeah. Well, still, but, you know. I'm smart, Flash. I'm smart I like know, you. But we're responsible to Grim to put out something that he won't get in trouble for, you know, reproducing on the first, yeah. you know, in the first we place. Neutered. You know, that would fix the whole problem. Mm. Now, how do you propose to do that, oh, wise one? Well, do a UD, Mister. I don't know why you. Why do I got to come up with all the hard? You questions? had the brainiac yeah. idea. You explain how it's going to happen. Man, there, I'm sport. coming up with the hard questions. I need answers. Hard for questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you're going to treat this like one of those freaking political fucking games. You can't handle the truth. I don't want to handle the truth. <laughs> it it's, stinks. I can smell the fucking shit from here. It's horrible. Wait, Get away from me. Take your truth and go away, you freak. Hey, we should have a game. Like, yeah. uh, you know, like we do trivia. We yeah. could like have a little short game where it's like. Tell uh, me the truth about uh, something you. that but, I will No, no, no. Coming. You got to use a movie quote in oh. response. Oh, right. and speaking yeah. of like freaky things, because you mm. could have like a freaky movie quote. But yeah. I caught this thing outside and it was like wrapped in a leaf. And it was like, what do they call that thing? You know, like the little skin they wear before they metamorphose. And, uh, I, 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 anyways, I, I, I brought him in the house, and I and he would like wiggle around, and I drip a little water on it just in case. Oh yeah, yeah, water. yeah. Okay. Got oh, it. a little you cocoon. Guys, yeah, I, yeah, but uh, not like a a silky one. It's just like a hard shell, but not like a locust. But anyways, he hatched out, and uh, or he or she did, not being sexist here, and <laughs> never sexist. saw it. What a it, uh, dork! <laughs> in my or somewhere, unless it like snuck out. When I open the door or something. What kind of that, pervert are you to come on my door table and not be a sexist? It was an insect. What's wrong with you, sport? I'm an insectist then, sir, if that will help. Weirdo. Insect. You had an insector side? 
No, I didn't kill it. I wanted to watch it hatch, so I was looking at it. As long as you're but not. But you had an insect inside. Yes, insect inside. <laughs> yeah, but as long as he's not refusing to bow to the boob, I won't lose any respect for him. You can, I've got a... if you want to, a... you could sleep with a cat, Vinny, for all I care. I will not judge you. You weirdo. I gotta take a picture of that. Just up. because you're having things happening with bugs does not change the way I see you at all. <laughs> I still think you're insane. <laughs> hey, I was making a sanity joke about you, and you just talked right not through it. Great. I'm smart. I'm smart. <laughs> hey, did you see that shit Tupa, with Cuomo? Thank you, Grimner. Hey, Tupa. hey, did you but, did you see that shit with Cuomo from CNN? No. Oh, there's a link on the minds I saw the other day, and he, and they videotape that CNN Cuomo guy, and he's telling the other guy, calling me Fredo is like calling you know, because I'm Italian is like the same as the nigger word. You can't. You know, it's the it's derogatory to my people. Oh, this is to be, bad. To be called like a Fredo because you know Fredo Corleone in the movie, and I'm thinking, wow, these people are so easily led to believe. Easily, there it is, ding, 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 yeah, ding. The to, winning word of the day, easily. To, to believe any stupid Sorry. fucking story that that you want to tell them to lead them where you want them to go, and they follow like like sheep. They do. I've seen it with... Uh, you think I'm making this up? Hey, I found this thing for you. Because, oh, you're uh, not listening to my commentary then. I, I get it now. Uh. Oh, I'm looking for this thing for you. Hmm. Here it is. Michael talks with Fredo. See, you. it's all based on you. Because, well, Fredo tried to have his brother assassinated, but he didn't. He didn't. It didn't work. So when Michael found out that his brother was a two-bit slime bucket, he warned him, well, when mom dies, so do you. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. the timestamp here. So. Yeah, but I'm see, copying this you know, for you to, to check out later, okay? Because we've said this thing so many times. Uh, I'm smart. Uh, what, what, what? I'm smart like you, Michael. Hmm. So here's Fredo talking yeah. to Michael. And I've got it at the timestamp where he's t saying this. So I'm smart. I'm not dumb. Yeah. But anyway, that's for you to look at later. But now uh, when you call an Italian Fredo, it's as insulting as calling a black guy a nigger. That's so stupid to say. Exactly. You know it's the whole fucking thing is stupid because words, it's not about what you say. It's about who hears them. <laughs> okay. So no, we're actually living in a day and age where yeah. people are having to self-censor themselves yeah, really. like I do <gasps> because I not to offend somebody in the words that I use, choose to use. Mm. Do, do you choose to use the words too, sir? Me? I don't give two shits. If you don't like what you're hearing, turn it off. That's your choice. If you're entertained, it's for being entertained and having a good time. Or hearing somebody else's weird idea about something you don't believe. So you never self-censor? No, so, I, I just avoid topics. What instead. if you're about like a bunch of kids at a birthday party or something? You're not no, that's to... different. And I wouldn't be in a situation like that in the first place, so stop. Well, I'm, okay, let's say you're in a bar. Do you, okay, in the bar, what? Girl Scouts come selling cookies. They don't, say, no, 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 hey, no, 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 no. These are. Well, maybe, no, they maybe they would. But I don't think they force the kids to do that kind of shit here. I haven't seen it that I know of. Well, I, I guess I'll let you off the hook on all of it then. Because yeah, I I have they the first year I was here, the kids from the school on their own, I guess, says you know through the school system, they got something where they go to the neighborhood. But I didn't understand what they were asking, and they didn't speak enough English to understand me back. But they didn't come back. So do you know what an hmm. Italian tire is? An Italian tire? Yes. <laughs> A Michelin. How the fuck, Benny? <laughs> uphill, they go downhill. Uphill, they go. <laughs> oh, bad. That, now, Benny the racist. <laughs> I'm a racist. I'm very fast. <laughs> okay, what is a WAP? A WAP? Without yeah, papers. W-O-P. Without papers. That's what that means. Tell that WAP to shut the fuck up. 
Oh, without papers. Hmm. Yeah, that's what WAP means. Wow. I don't. I still don't. Is that like an insult? Or what they used to call dagos Italians? It, yeah. I don't know why. Oh they call yeah, WAP. Okay, yeah. without paper. <laughs> yeah. Because no, from our day, man, having the paper was back. everything. Oh, Mexican a wet back. Hmm. Insinuating they swam the river. And. They must have been like swimming on their back and carrying their bundle on their belly as they swam. And so they came out with a dry front and a wet back. Right. Well, it's just a damn good thing I'm in the 21st century and don't live like that anymore. Let me tell you, mister. And I drink out of a glass. Man, somebody's rocking some music out there somewhere. Where? Where? In oh, the I world, yeah, in outside my house. Is it bothering oh, you? Are you gonna get order. your gun? You got a band outside your house. He's Sweet. gonna get his gun and go shoot them all. No, you I know don't. what? I've never been invited to. Uh, hey, what are you doing? Hold on, let me mute up. I've never been invited to oh. a mass shooting. You know how disappointing this is. You know, my life is becoming I'm getting to the end here. Sixty years old coming up. And, I, you know, I missed, like, Epstein. I never got molested when I was a kid by the grown-ups. Can you imagine? You I, I was too fucking homely for these <laughs> child molesters to, to love me. So I missed out on all, all that good stuff. Then what else did I miss out on? Well, I never got taller than five foot, like, just short of four. So I, I get all the good oxygen before it gets destroyed by the buses. <laughs> Ah. Well, yeah, because all that shit rises. Okay, hey, yeah. I'm headed out early. I'm going for a buggy ride. Cool. Oh, okay. Enjoy. Have Thanks fun. a lot for popping in, Vincent. Hey, guys, Appreciate fun. it. For See you, Vin. Hey, we're coming up to the end of the show here anyway, ain't we, Miss Mary? Yes, we is. Yes, we so is. there you go. Well, I appreciate it, Vinny. Thanks for popping by, and I appreciate you stopping in. And thank it's, you. Thank you really going to be a drag that you're not on all the time yeah. anymore but you got all those reruns <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah so if i get you know if i get mary sick i can always just pop you in go find something on go. the interwebs to entertain me and me and you did a lot of fun shit on the yeah. dark table before you left it so you've yeah. left well. you've left quite the memory on the recording area <laughs> Well, and Circle said something about making a some kind of thing just in my laughs, and it'd be like, oh my lord, that would be. You need to have the lead up to the laugh, though, because <laughs> you know what? What was it that triggered that one? <laughs> squirrel. Uh... Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. The squirrel invades quite often. Mm-hmm. But see, we're we're living in, in truly insanity, and it shows you that because the way that we do finance, it's well, finance itself is just insanity. It's just slavery with a fancy piece of paper attached to it. Yeah. No matter how you look at it, it you're you're indebted to that thing, and therefore, it, but lying to us about it is just fucked. And where they assume the control over us, for us to be controlled the way we are, just pisses me off. You have no idea, am I? I'm telling you, it pisses me off there, little missy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I was making, uh, making fun of a couple of people on the RLM the other day with my wife. And I came up with a new <laughs> name for some friends. <laughs> Uh, oh. Well, I steal from all the good the good writers and borrow stuff like Vinny does. Just sometimes I I guess I don't really know it, and other times it slapped me right in the face because I'm a big Pinky and the Brain fan, and I ah. yeah I, I stole the Pinky and the Brain theme song to entertain myself the other day. <laughs> See, and I just, I never really got into Pinky. There was an awful lot of those that my kids watched that. Dork times, Miss Mary. Dork times. There, yeah, you have, well. You have your yeah. dorky ways about you that, it, believe me. 
<laughs> You're not here by any kind of accident. <laughs> hey, do you want to uh, you want to do the lineup for us on your parting ways out on the dork table? <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, ha, ha. <clears throat> Excuse me, I gotta get my voice right. Um, <laughs> I gotta find the schedule. <laughs> I was, I was diddle farting around. I'm so well. with you. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing like a dork table with Miss Mary. And Vinny, Vinny was unusually quiet this week, so me and you could yak and act crazy. Yeah, that so, was awfully nice of Vinny. Yeah, because he's he comes it, by a lot more often. Yes. So, yes. Well, and once you get him revved up, it's like holy mackinac! Like we got, we got some real twang going on here in the countryside. Vinny's talking. Yeah, but so. we're we're using the wire for the show podcast now. So, if you're on the wire thing, then you can get on to the show. Sweet. There you go. Sweet. You okay? You feel so. all because all my hostages know who they are. <laughs> I'm not real sure about that, but we'll, we'll just go with that. Thanks, okay. Mary. For, oh, see. Okay. Oh, Tomorrow man. at noon is Grimner uh, with uh, the Blues Grimner. on RLM Radio. And a rousing game of trivia probably going to be going on in the chat. Directly following Grim will be Hal Anthony, Hal who's going to open up Anthony. the whoop ass on your ass and mm. have you singing the blues when he takes you behind the woodshed. Then on Monday at... 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Mm. Grim's going to be popping in with some leftovers. Mm, mm, mm. I can smell the brain food now. (laughs) 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 I got you wheezing. I can smell the brain food. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Maybe that's a pair of socks. (laughs) He sure is made brain food. <laughs> you don't want That's to look sorry, first before I'm you ju- to it. You might want to look before you judge that smell. <laughs> I don't know why. That's where my mind went to. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, help. Continue. <laughs> Wow. And then head cheese just popped into my head. <laughs> Here we go. No. Help. It just ran right across there like Squirrel. a streak. Squirrel. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit. What is <laughs> Good night, everybody. Would you stop it? Would okay. <laughs> you stop Wow. Okay, Flash is going to be back Tuesday morning at 2 a.m. in the U.S. on the East Coast within a perfect world. Maybe he'll still be laughing. God only knows. (laughs) And I will be back Wednesday for the Wackadoodle Wednesday edition of the Rocket Chair. Do I have to do any more? i got tears in my eyes. (laughs) No, it's because you're fun. See? Well, there's no better way to stop doing something than to go out laughing. That's true. Always leave them laughing. I had fun. So there you go. Uh, Ah, whatever. Pent up frustration has struck. (laughs) Speaking of pent up frustration, Uh yeah, as soon as I get done here, I'm back outside and pull some more weed. It's not too hot. Ah, okay. Uh, Well, yeah, there's. This week of rain, I, I swear to God, I looked up the, the history for out here for precipitation, yeah. and we're already two and a half inches above normal for the month of August, and we're only halfway through the month. It's like, dang. So, so yeah. all that stuff Weeds the government been... does not experiment with in front of our faces. No, the, yeah. those are acts of nature that look a lot like government intrusion. That's Mother well, you know, Nature... That's... You know, <laughs> come on, it's that, how that was like that that uh, little poem that I did mm-hmm. um, last night at the end of the show. The uh, oh shit, what the hell was his name? I don't know. <laughs> Brain farts are us. Um, something be gone. Ooh. Gosh darn it! Mm-hmm. You know where? Um, mm-hmm. 
Some oh, see, I am totally brain farting. Okay. Things are not connecting. My cobwebs are just kind of fluttering around because you got me laughing so damn hard. I people. know. So, well, we can always <laughs> send people to your Friday night con- um, podcast to check out what well, now you're talking yeah. about today. <laughs> there is an- Antigonish. Antigonish, the man yeah. who wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a really interesting poem. And man, the more I think about that, the more I think, oh my Lord, that's just because you know all these that's not happening that's not happening it's the thing that's not there that's really there so yeah (laughs) that's that's the government yeah what is it the last verse of it last night i i saw upon the stair a little man who wasn't there he wasn't there again today oh how i wish he'd go away Thank you, CIA, NSA, FBI, all of you other governmental alphabet soup groups. Wow, you say that That's... now, but you'll change your mind. Nah. Oh, you know they use that 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 line in the, that movie Identity. The oh, serial yeah? killer had like nine different personalities, and they're all killers. Mm. Ah. Yeah. It was fun. Hmm. It was called Identity. I haven't seen that one. We, we might not like it, but it's a, about the whole murder thing's all in a rainstorm at a motel. It's very well done. Very believable. Hmm. I mean, you're, you're actually, there's parts of it where you actually kind of get caught up in the story for a no, long, long enough to, to forget you're watching a movie. Hmm. See, those are really good movies when you get so caught up into them. Then. Yeah, and they got the characters like they got the uh, the guy that's got the multiple personalities. He's very convincing in his be, you know, in his acting. So you're entertained and you're taken to this other place that you don't even have any real experience in, and you're taking that expression as, hey, that's that makes sense to me. <laughs> See, and that's how they do us. They mm-hmm. make shit up, they give it a title, they tell you what it is, and then you repeat it. And it's something completely different. We just well, don't... That's, all, that's part of that spell cast. Yes, mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying is underneath what we're looking at is something completely different. And if you try to explain that to anybody else, that that's when the tinfoil starts to come in. <laughs> uh-huh. You're seeing, yeah, you're seeing all the wrong things, you know, because we're wrong. There you go. It's not mm-hmm. our fault, but at least you got to laugh on the end of the show. Yes, yes. Oh, man. Yeah, that was a good one. Thank you. <laughs> well, oh, God. let me They're close this up. They're talking about breaking your penis in there. Yeah, in I the see top. that. Wow. Mm. That sounds painful. No, not. it says you can. Not. Well, I know you can, but it's like, oh, dude, seriously. Ow. Oh, what a thing to end the show with. All right, I think well we're we've gone a little over, right? Oops. Yeah. So uh, I don't mind. I just wanted you to know, because we're not ah. going any, into anybody's time. It's just the traditional. True. Yeah. For the re, you know, for the rehashers out there that pick it up uh, after the podcast is uh, loaded on their stuff. Ah, ah. I don't and know we what just to had call to, it. Had to end it with a. No, we're not going to go there. Thanks, everybody. (laughs) Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend.